During this and the next couple of videos, we're going to cover how you can use a PCL project, meaning a Xamarin project that has an iOS project, an Android project, and a PCL to actually be able to use SQLite in a shared way. So you will be able to have SQLite code inside of the PCL and share it among the rest of the projects. So what I'm going to do here on Visual Studio for Mac is create a new project. I'm going to choose multi-platform app and I'm going to be selecting blank native application for iOS and Android. Make sure that I have C Sharp selected as a project language and I'm going to click next. I'm going to name this project SQLite, SQLite dash example two because I, I had already started this and there was a mistake. Anyway, I have Android and iOS selected here. Use portable class library. It's important that we select this one instead of shared library. And we're going to click next and we're going to click on create. And we're going to have this project. Now, let me just make this bigger. Now, the first thing that we have to do is to make sure that we add a NuGet package to all of these projects. So the PCL, the Android and the iOS project. And to do that, we need to go to the packages folder. We can start on the PCL right click on it and select add packages in here make sure that nuget.org is selected and what we're going to do is search for sqlite dash net dash pcl and you will find it's probably the first option in the list and it has this very nice icon with a gradient on it and it is by a frank a kruger so thanks frank for for this uh, the, list, the latest version that I have available right now is 1.3.1, but you can select the latest one that you have available. And I'm going to click on Add Package. So it's going to add up all of these packages to this PCL, and you will have to do this for all three projects. So I'm just going to jump with the magic of video to the end of this. Once I have added all of these packages to the three projects, by the way, you may need to accept some license. And just don't forget to add this uh, the same way to the Android and the iOS project. An error that you could encounter when trying to add a SQL net, a SQL dash net dash PCL library to your PCL project is that it could not be added. It could simply not be added. And you can try this again and it won't be added. So the thing is that we are trying to add it to probably a PCL that is using the profile 111, so 111 with PCL 4.5, so we need to change this. So what you have to do to change it is right click on your PCL project, select options, go to general, and in here you're going to click on change and you are going to see a current profile option that you have to change to PCL 4.5 uh, profile 259. So make sure that you select this instead of the 111. Now there's also a 78 and a 49, but let's go ahead and select the 259. Click OK. Click OK. And you can try this again. And this time it should be able to add the package with no problem. So once the package has been added to all of three projects, we need to go to the PCL project. And you can see that we already have a my class class, but I don't like that name, so I'm just going to remove it. I'm going to delete it, and I'm actually going to be creating a new folder. So a new folder inside of the PCL that is going to be just called classes. And inside of this one, I'm going to add a new file, and I'm going to select general, make sure that I select empty class, and I'm going to call this database helper. So this class is going to help me connect to my database. I want to make sure that this is public in Visual Studio on your Windows PC. It may not be public by default, just make sure that it is. And inside of here, I am going to be adding a couple of methods that will allow me to write and to read to a SQLite database. So the write method should allow me to enter any type of data into my database. So to be able to do that, I'm actually going to be needing to create a generics method. This, this means that any kind of object that I receive or that this method receives, it will be able to know how to use it. So I'm going to define a public, um, make it static, 
So we can access it without creating an object out of the database helper class. This object is going to be of type Boolean, so we can return whether or not the operation was successful. And I'm just going to call this insert. Now, to be able to make this generic, I have to establish this like uh, this type of method that is going to be receiving also the type. And to be able to receive the type, we actually need to add a ref in here. You know that to set the argument, we have to set the type, but we didn't know the type, so I'm just going to write T again. I'm just going to call this data. And we're also going to be needing to receive the database path where the database is going to be located inside of the device. So we're going to be needing to return a Boolean. So by default, I'm just going to return false. And so we get rid of that error that we were uh, being shown. And so what we are going to be able to do with this T is no matter what the actual type is on runtime, we can use it while we write the code. So the first thing that we need to do is create a connection to the database. And to be able to do that, I'm going to be using a using statement. So this is only available inside of this using block. And I'm going to create a connection that is going to be equal to SQLite dot SQLite connection. And actually this has to be a new SQLite connection. And the constructor of the SQLite connection class receives the database path, which we have in the DB path right here. And you see how it requests another value that has a default value of true. So unless you want to change this to false, which is not store data time as text, which I recommend you do, you set as true, you don't have to change anything in here. So once you have the connection established, all you have to do is go ahead and call the insert method, which receives an object. And as an object, you can actually pass data itself. But where is this going to be inserted? We don't have any tables yet. So what we can do is actually create a table right here by just doing connection dot create table. Now the create table is going to be requesting a type. So in here we can actually set the type to be T because we don't really know what the type is going to be at runtime, but this will still create the table that we need once we call this method with the appropriate types. Now it turns out that insert is actually a method right, that returns an integer. So what we can do here is evaluate if what was returned by the insert method is different than zero. It means that the connection was successful, the insert was successful, and more than zero elements were inserted, then we can return true. Otherwise, this return fault will just be executed. And now our method is ready. So before we continue to go ahead and demonstrate how this works from the Android and iOS projects, let's go ahead and add a new class, which is going to represent what is going to be added to the database. So I'm going to create an empty class and I will just call it book. And so what we're going to do is, yes, creating books and inserting them into a database. And the database is going to be having a book table. So in here, we would actually send, uh, instead of data, we will send a book, which is of type book, of course. And in here, the create table is going to be executed on the type book. And so a book is going to be inserted to that table. So, but we're going to take a look at that in the next video. Right now, all I have to do is create some properties in here and we can do that faster with a prop shortcut. And I'm going to set uh, the ID to be an integer. So I have ID here. I'm also going to be adding a string name for the book. I probably should also add an author. So I'm just going to add prop string author. And this is going to be fairly enough for right now, but there is something else that you have to keep in mind, and that is to be able to add SQLite arguments to these properties. So for example, this ID is going to be the primary key. 
so I can write primary key in here and you can see that it's just not showing anything that is because I still don't know what primary key is so I can solve this by adding using a SQLite statement to this namespace so I can start using primary key and the ID is also going to have an auto increment function so this ID is now set when it is added to the database as the primary key and it's going to be auto incremented by one every time that a new item is added. And you could check all of the SQLite properties attributes that you can set. Uh, for example, there is an ignore attribute that you can use in case you have something that doesn't need to be inside of the database or in case in this class you have a list object or a list property and of course a list property cannot be inside of a table so you would ignore that when it is added to the SQLite database but you get the idea right now we already have the class that is going to be defining what is being inserted we already have the class that is so far going to help us insert new items into the database in the next lecture we're going to take a look how we can use this inside of an Android project